everybody. It's Dawn. I'm here. Sorry I'm late. It's LA. The traffic's awesome. No, it is not. But um, <laughs> I'm excited to be here because we are celebrating an album release. We are on the third album, guys. This is the finale. I'm really, really excited to be able to be here to talk to you in a different way. I always kind of talk to you, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, but I kind of wanted to come to you different. And Facebook is awesome because they have this live kind of Conan O'Brien thing happening here and I kind of like it. They got like different things for me. They got like a truth or dare thing. I'm really scared to do that shit with you guys because y'all are ridiculous and I feel like the truth or dare thing might be kind of reckless with the hearts so we'll see about that shit. But um, I just kind of wanted to start things off um, by just answering some of the questions that Facebook gave me and just getting warm and getting people in here so we can then talk about what we're really here to talk about which is the Red Era. Yeah. Um, so they gave me this uh, cute little pad of things that are really interesting, like, who are you and what brings you to L.A.? And, um, you know, weed brought me here and, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, no, um, just like any artist that came to L.A., uh, I was in Dirty Money and coming from Danity Kane and we were recording between here, Miami and New York. And L.A. became a second home, and after we finished the Dirty Money Project and we had did touring, uh, I just stayed and decided to start my own hustle, which began the eras. Thanks, Facebook. <laughs> um, who are your musical inspirations? This is a great question. I think um, I have a lot, um, but uh, they, they, they vary because there's influence and then there's inspirations. For me, um, someone who really influenced me uh, started with my father, and then he's a great musician, by the way, and he introduced me to Otis Redding, who happened to be the only artist who was tattooed on me with his lyrics uh, from uh, Dreams to Remember, which is one of my favorite records by Otis Redding, which I don't think a lot of people know. Um, I really love that record. Uh, and then after that, it kind of got reckless, and I started falling in love with artists like Biff Naked, The Cranberries, um, <laughs> Bjork, uh, Live. Uh, man, a case choice, you know, really great alternative bands, and that became kind of my aesthetic. And I, one of my first concerts was Green Day, and I was like, what, 13, and I was like, Dad, take me to a concert. And he was like, Sure. He had no idea who Green Day was. Got there, was weed everywhere, mosh pits happening, and he was just kind of confused at, you know, why I wanted to be here at that concert. And then he heard the music, and he was like, I got it. You know, they were really, really tight, really, really great. Um, it was my first first concert, and Brain Stew was my favorite record, and they played the shit out of that record, and it was so, so great. Um, really good memories. So, yeah. I'll do one more, and then I'll dive into this truth or dare. Dear God, please do not have me. Okay? Because y'all know y'all going to have me in here being reckless, and I, you know, let's, let's make it PG-13, folks. Okay. Um, any hidden talents? Um... Uh, what's a hidden talent? Is Can we say that live? No, we can't. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have any hidden talents. Oh, no. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can bake really good. I don't know if that's a hidden talent more than a guilty pleasure, but like, I really love to bake. And, um, I get really creative. And my latest one, sometimes they're really great winners and sometimes I get really questionable looks from my, <laughs> from my, my guy. So, um, but I really love to bake and I watch Barefoot Contessa. That's a hidden talent. Is that? I don't know. But she's awesome. And she makes really great casseroles. <laughs> I don't know, it got weird. Okay, so that's that. Okay, <laughs> that means stop that shit. Okay, um, so do I take the ball and shake it? Right? Is that what I do? Truth or dare, I pick one. Okay, um, I'm a dare girl, so I'm going to do a dare. If I can pick it up. Okay. <laughs> okay, it says, read your last text. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, my last text is... Um, <laughs> my last text is to the Facebook team, and it says... I was coming from North Hollywood and I'm late and this is ridiculous. This is insane. I'm here. 
So that's my <laughs> that's my last text telling everyone I'm late. The last one before that one was. <laughs> All right. Um, let's do another dear. Post an unflattering selfie. Fuck no, I'm not. Do <laughs> they criticize me enough. No way, no way, not happening. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look at truth. The silliest thing you have an emotional t attachment to. I think I've just committed to bare barefoot contessa, huh? That's I'm admitting to that. The silliest thing you have an emotional attachment to. Um. Okay. So I'm renovating my home, and uh, <laughs> I think I have a thing about pillows, and I think it's embarrassing, and I think it, uh, I think I need to talk about it. Does anyone else, females, do you take your pillows, and when people lay on them, and then they leave, and you have the sofa, you place the pillows back in a neat way for the fashion sense of it? I think that that's dumb, and it's an emotional attachment that's really dumb. But for some reason, when my guy got up, I did it. I fucking fixed the, the thing. Like my mom and my mom used to do it and I used to look at her like, it's just going to get set on. But now I'm like doing it too. <laughs> just an observation. And he looked at me like a guy looks at someone as like, bitch, it's pillows. You know, like it's not <laughs> like it's supposed, you know, well, there's that. Okay. This is getting really weird and going so far left than I anticipated it to go. Okay. I'll do the eight ball. Okay, um, you guys still with me? Yes, we got questions. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Will Redemption Heart do better than the other era albums? Come on, fucker. Come on. It says. <laughs> read it. Hold it, hold it up. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, that, it's a line. I guess. It says, it is, no, it, it is certain, motherfucker, it is certain. <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, so that's, that answers the question. So we're going to bring in the questions, and I'm going to talk to you guys now. Facebook's saying I can't play anymore. Um, okay. Oh, hey, guys. It says, how do you do it all with no label? That is a really good question. Um. In all truthfulness, it's really difficult um, because you have to be comfortable with rejection. Um, and even things like uh, money management and how to uh, make it all make sense and not make it look cheap, the quality of the music, respecting the people who are part of your process, but also knowing if you can afford to have them. Because the reality is, if you're a label and you want the best, you have to pay for the right kind of, kinds of people around you to support you and the kind of quality work that you have. Um, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't, and that sucks, you know? So how do I do it? I have a great team of people who believe in me. It is not me at all, you know? I have a great PR team now who's with me. I have a great guy, Kyle. Kyle has been with me. Man, I owe him, a, like, everything, you know? Uh, my director, Monty Marsh, insane. My parents for those days when I couldn't afford it and they were there for me. Um, the list goes on. And my makeup team, Nimai, um, Joey, Nina, these are people who have been with me and they take low cuts. They take the underdog looks. Tom from Local Reaction, like they just kind of like, they just love me beyond it all and they are with me through it. And that, honestly, when I have my really bad days and I have no more ideas, and I'm trying to figure out how to make it make sense. Get people around you who want to see you succeed just as much as you do, and that will that will ensure your success. So, you know, all the way up to this, I was doing it on my own, and I was lucky enough to Kyle and I really were lucky enough to have people who would come on and say it's not about the money, it's not about anything more than we believe in what you're doing. So, you know, I'm grateful, you know, for that because this was a hard one. This was a hard one to do, but we are here. Third album, really proud about it. It comes out tonight, you guys, midnight. Redemption, out tonight. Um, who else? Let me see. What's going on here? My favorite tattoo is my back tattoo. I have, it was ten, uh, three 10 hour sessions, um, and my entire back is done, and it's still not done. I have one more 10 hour session to do, but um, it's three uh, wings in one, and it is an example of extreme flight. 
So at my highest form, if I have three, three different wings, a dragonfly, um, the angel wings, and then it has the butterfly wings. So all three in one. And it was custom. It was um, hand-drawn. Um, let's see. What else? Let's see what y'all talking about. Oh, my God. It's a lot. Will the track You Think You Know be released? That was a track that was on the... Um, the uh, intro that I showed you guys for the trailer. Um, I'm going to just throw that one out for you guys, and it will be, I think Kyle and I are talking about releasing it tomorrow, just on SoundCloud for you guys to have, because it's not on the album. But, you know, I always have something up my sleeve, and we're going to release some more content, um, some more music just on the side for you guys to have as well that didn't make the album but deserve to be heard. So we always do that. It's because we have no label, we don't give two fucks. So we just kind of do what we want to do. And we really make music for you guys. I think that's the one thing that I'm proud about being independent is that there's no fucking rules for a label to tell us you can't do this, you can't do that. It's for you guys. This entire project has been about you. So if you want music, if you want content, we do our best to make sure you get it because you deserve it. You guys have been rocking with me for a long time. It's about the music and nothing else. So yeah. Um, let's see what else. Which song did you enjoy recording the most on the album? So if you guys haven't heard, NPR was streaming this album a week before it was released. I did that on purpose uh, because I wanted to give the fans, the movement, the choice to want to buy it. You know, I, I think that nothing should be force fed to you guys. I think you have to decide whether or not you want to be a part of the, the sound. Um, and one of the, my favorite records um, on this album is called L.A. Um, and it is, man, it, it just, it, the story behind it is so real and so honest. I come from Louisiana, which in, in initial is L.A., and the A is small. And then I moved to L.A. and tried to, you know, L.A. is kind of the example of the industry. And it's a larger spelling. That A is massive. And I feel like I, in turn, I'm similar to the small A kind of trying to survive in the large L.A., you know. And how do we, I think that's, is that me? You can turn me off. I don't know. Sorry, um, I uh, I think the and the sound signifies that. So you have this kind of record that sounds very much LA and has the synth and the and it drives itself through, and then um, toward the end of it, it evolves, you know, and it, it goes into this like journey and it ends with trombone shorty at the end, and that really is how I see LA is and how I am in LA. I'm the trumpet, you know, and no matter how much the synth and all of that rises, I'm gonna still be that Louisiana, New Orleans girl that's gonna sound and see things as the trumpet. Um, and that's kind of what that record is. And big ups to the producers on this album, Machine Drum, I owe you everything, man. That dude is awesome. Kava, Noise Castle, like Trombone Shorty, uh, PJ Morton. I've never worked with such amazing, amazing producers. I was lucky to have Machine Drum, man. That dude is ill. Like, he is ill, and he is humble. And I just, I'm so grateful to be able to work with him. And I've been lucky to work with Noise Castle again. He was on Blackheart. And I just, you know, I, again, I think we're doing things that are really stretching the boundaries of what's supposed to sound like these genres they keep trying to put us in. And I think we keep we're keeping them on their toes, man. And I'm really happy to be a part of that group of people to do so. Um, what else? Dawn, how would you, how would a person looking to become a PA in the industry get their foot in the door? A PA? I, um, production. A production assistant or a personal assistant? Both. Because uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm trying to be a PA too as well. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know what you'd have to do in that case, but I do know in order to get anywhere in this industry, you have got to hustle. There are no freebies. Everyone out here is hustling. We were just talking about people are actors slash waiters slash PAs slash you really got to want this. And the moment that the door closes, you can't go running. You got to, like, take it and figure it out. You know, I, I kind of get – I'm lucky. I got a lot of no people in my life. They kind of tell me exactly what I don't want to hear, <laughs> you know. And so when I don't know what I'm doing or I feel like I'm at my lowest, they tell me you got to figure it out. You know, and I'm lucky to have those people to say pivot. You know, if you can't make this, if they tell you no, how do you figure this out? So I'm always, if you want to do this PA job and you want to figure it out, research, research, research. And then once you research, figure out what makes the edge of you different than everybody else and go with that. Find your niche and then figure out how that fits in that job. And make yourself stand alone, stand out to be able to stick in it. And then when you get in it, be above and beyond everybody else there. So if people stay for six hours, you stay for ten. That's what I did. 
All right, let's go. Uh, Renegades video. Um, we will be releasing something really soon about the visuals, guys. I'm really excited to tell you guys I have a new way of releasing the album. We are releasing this album as a USB necklace. So not only will you be able to get the digital aspect of this album, but you'll be able to wear the album too. Mm -hmm. So the USB will c include not only the album, not only a table book of fashion photos, not only the lyrics, but virtual reality content. So you'll be able to see this story told in VR and it will be told as the narrator. So again, I'm so excited about that to be, because to be a woman of color and to be able to be, be able to say that is just, uh, I'm so happy because we are sometimes not included. There's not a lot of diversification in the tech world. And I feel like the more we say it and the more we acknowledge it and then we fix it, we grow, you know? And I'm really happy to be able to, to do this kind of work with honestly not a lot because VR is fairly new. And you know, VR takes a lot of money and a lot of branding and a lot of people behind you to really push it to where it needs to go because it's still in its early stages. So to be able to have this VR content delivered to you and have you wear it, I'm really proud to be among the few who are really dealing with this, this content and dealing with VR because I think it will be something where all artists are gonna start to use it and they're gonna see how beautiful and how needed it is. And to be among the few doing it right now, um, I'm very pleased with that. So make sure you go to dharmashard.net. I, I don't know if they're sold out yet. They've sold out three times already, but we made them back in restock. Go there now and make sure you buy it so that you can have a piece of this special edition because we're not gonna have it for long. So good stuff. And then what else we got? Somebody say, yes! And so innovative! And then what else we got? Tech is white. Oh, no. I didn't want to read that out loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, well, we're trying to change that. Tech is not white. It has, it's colorful, but I, it, we, we need more of us there, you know? And I think that, I don't think it's purposeful. I just think we got to start giving, putting the light out on, on it, you know, showing it. There are people there. They're just not in the forefront, and I think they need to have it. It's no different in animation, which, again, I'm excited because I'm working with Adult Swim now and animating with them, and we've been doing some really great things. I just released one of my favorite new curated animations with the amazing Rob Coyne, and um, we've got a really cool uh, ID that's out right now that had 100,000 li like looks in like 24 hours. So we're gonna do more with animation, and again, there's not a lot of women, you know, well, they are, but they're not, you know, getting their shine, and now we see people like Roxane Gay, who's writing for Marvel, beautiful black woman writing for Marvel, and we see um, Riri Williams as Iron Man now, you know, which is super fucking cool, and even uh, Ariel Johnson, who is the owner of a coffee shop comic book, who's now on the cover of the new Iron Man uh, series. So again, we're out there, we're coming, and you know, I think that it's beautiful that we're starting to show women in the comic world, and I'm happy to be an animator, and I'm happy to be working with Adult Swim, and super honored that Jason would even give me a chance, so thank you to Adult Swim for letting me share that platform as well. So we're doing a lot of good things. What else we got? Bring it on. Dawn, who are you loving coming up in music right now? Let's talk about redemption. Fuck everybody else. No, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> um... I love a lot of people right now. I think my biggest um, happiness is for Chance, the rapper, just because he's an indie dude, and um, it just shows where we're gonna, where we're going, and the appreciation of the independent artists. I think he's really broke the mold, and I'm really proud uh, of what he has done as an independent artist. And I hope to follow in the same wave where um, we're able to be walking in the White House with no label and still doing our shit and being respected. I think that's beautiful, and I really applaud his success. Um, what else we got? Let's go, hit me. Was Black Crimes at all inspired by Green Day? No, Black Crimes is on the album Redemption, you guys, um, which again, you have to get, it's coming out, so you gotta get it. Um, but this is a really serious record that I really wanted to talk about, which is um, hate crimes and the killing of people of color. And I wanted to do it in a way that talked about, I don't think it's hate if people continuously do it, I think there's love in that. And I feel like people really love hurting us. And I question why their love is so hateful. And it's an honest question where I feel like um, if people continuously do something, it obviously can't be something that is, is hate. They, there has to be a love or a passion to want to see us hurt or, or to see our demise. And I raised that question in that record, and I really asked 
those people out there who don't want us to win or don't want us to succeed or are hurting us the way they are, why is your, your, your love so hateful? And that's what the Black Crimes record is about. And I'm really happy that we were able to make the record really uh, evolve. A lot of the records like Love Under Lights and Black Crimes, they evolve in LA, they evolve uh, beautifully. You know, they really tell the story of, of some, some, some seem hopeful, some are questions, and some address serious issues like gay rights, like uh, sexuality, like being a woman in the industry, being a black woman in the industry, and just being a person, being a human, and what is that person's worth, you know? Um, I really am proud to make a record like this and then still be able to call it an electronic record or an R&B record. It just proves that EDM itself has soul and that it's so much more, has so much more depth than people allow it to have. And I think even trying to class it as an electronic album is still unfair too because it has soul, it has live music, it has New Orleans in it. You know, I, I think this is more of a sign of pop culture and where it's going, where you'll see artists speak about the sign of the times, which Nina Simone said, you know, you should be speaking on records that are a sign of the times. Your music should, should exemplify that. And I'm happy to be able to make a record that can do that, but still have the pulse um, of pop culture. What else you got? I love, 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 lo love under lights. It has an 80s feel to it. How did you come about that? Um, so love under lights is coming out of Blackheart, right? So we're coming out of the black era. We just fell at our lowest. And when you come out of your low, you're naked, right? When you are at your shittiest moment, there is no, you have nothing left but what you have, you know, but just the skin on your body, right? So the feeling of the intro felt like you were literally coming out of a cocoon or coming out of something of the dark of you and you have nothing left love under lights is the appreciation and the understanding that you are now by yourself and you have to understand who you are to move further so it kind of speaks on a woman looking at another woman and appreciating her and finding love within that you know and then another woman seeing a man and finding the love and wanting to interact with that love so it blends and it kind of twists the idea of sexuality out the gate because you don't know if the woman is in love with the woman, you don't know if the man is in love with the woman, it doesn't really matter. It's just saying, I'd really love to do things with you. I'd really love to get to know who you are. That's a self-realization. Whoever you have now become at your lowest, you gotta get to know that person, you know what I mean? Because you, you've been lost. So now you're getting acquainted with this self, this new self that you have. So it's an introduction to who that is and it's in third person and you're seeing each, you know, people and you're just dancing in that. In your, naked, in your nakedness and knowing who you are is self-awareness at its best. That's why when the record changes, it, go, it pans from left to right. It's realization, right? And then it goes into this tribal feel because to me, honestly, when you're at your realist and you're in that naked moment, it should feel native, you know what I mean? It should feel like it's from a root of something, you know? And I felt like the drums and that tribal feel, it almost feels like you're dancing with nothing, just you and nature by yourself kind of becoming acquainted. So it's self and, you know, and nature kind of becoming one. And you can, you can hear that. And I really wanted to demonstrate that in that record. They're telling me I got to go. No, motherfuckers. No, okay. Um, uh, oh, God, I want to answer all your questions. Um, I'm loving these explanations. Please do this for every song. They won't let me, dude. Um, give me one more I can talk about and then I'll wrap it up. Because I, what is the message that you want everyone to take from this? This is a good one. This entire journey, guys, like I was going through it. I want you to know that this wasn't just my story. When I talk to you guys, when I, you know, have conversation with you about what you've gone through, um, it's our story. And the whole point was to have a voice because I felt like I didn't have one. You know, I felt like I was stifled in the sense that everyone told me what I should have been and what I should be instead of me telling everyone who I was. And I think a lot of people go through that. So I would hope that through this era, when you're going through the things you're going through, you can pick which album fits you in that moment and just sit in that shit, you know what I mean? And know that there is a redemption. You know, you can be in your black heart moment and know that when you get to your shit, there's an album to get you through that. Because to me, music has always just been about therapy. There was never any color to what I loved. You know, I didn't care that Green Day was white. I didn't care that Bjork was what she was. That shit touched me. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to make music that heals you. So if these records can get you through the shit that I got through, that you saw me go through, literally, from the beginning of making the band till now, 
then fuck it, I did my job as an artist. And I think that's any artist out there. The whole point is to make you feel. You could hate my shit, you could love it, you could feel some time, like in between about it. But if it made you feel something or even had an opinion, it did its job. This is Dawn, tuning in live on WBIG. Now, um, I have to go guys, I have to go, but I wanna thank Facebook um, for having me. I hope we can do this again because again, Thank you, Facebook, for having someone who doesn't have a machine to be able to sit here and do this and give artists like me, independent artists, a platform to speak to our fans. I think that's big when something so a machine so big allows for an independent artist to use it as a platform that speaks volumes about what, who you are as a, as a company. So thank you for that. And um, thank you to you guys for fucking with me, man, for liking me through the worst of times through the worst of times, right? And through the best of times. Um, it's been an honor to, to be able to be in your radios. And I hope that, um, shit, we can keep doing this shit for a while. I love you guys. Thank you to everyone that I didn't mention. If I didn't mention you, I love you. But thank you to my whole peoples who rock with me. Um, Redemption is out at midnight. You should probably go and, you know, send your last money and get it. You know, I mean, it's okay. You can go broke for me. It's okay. It's fine. And um, I love you guys. Peace out, motherfuckers. Drops mic. Oh, that's somebody's phone. Oh, my God.